What is up, everybody, and welcome to our episode one of Swindler's Den Presents The Lost Minds of Fandelver. I'm Grizzlock, the Dungeon Master for this series, and here with me are some uh, some good friends of mine. You guys ready? Are we introing each other first, uh, or are this, we just like... The... No, 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 yeah, 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 we're gonna... We're gonna we're going to talk about some stuff before we get into it. Um, okay. First, we're going to introduce all the players, and and I'll start just so you guys can get a feel of how this is going to go. My name is Grizzlock. Um, you guys are all supposed to say, Hi, Grizzlock. Hi, Grizzlock. Hi, Grizzlock. Hi, Grizzlock. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I uh, stream on Twitch. I make videos on YouTube. And I'm also on this channel on Mondays in our Amoris game. This is my first time ever DMing, and uh, please bear with me as we go through the learning process of DMing together. Uh, so I guess I'll pass it over to you, Equa. Go ahead, tell us about yourself. Um, make sure you talk about uh, your favorite color, and also your Dungeons & Dragons experience. Oh shit, okay, well. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Equa, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, um, Hi Equa. Hi, Equa. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite color. I like a lot of colors. We'll go with green for now. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yes. I don't know what this intro is. Uh, my name's Equa. I'm a Twitch streamer and occasional voice actor when I feel like it, and other stuff. And also, I'm the DM for Amoris, which is our Monday game on Swindler's Den, um, on the Twitch channel, and then like Wednesday, Wednesdays on YouTube. So you should go check that out. It's super cool. Okay. So I'll take it off of me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, go next. Yeah, go for it. Hello, everyone. I am Nisa. I have very little experience in D and D, but I have been watching the Immorse channel for a few weeks now. Uh, my favorite color is orange. I will not wear it though. And uh, I do not have any platforms. I am a part-time. Uh, fan fiction writer, but uh, mostly you do a lot of reading and just playing a lot of video games. That's lit. I want I want to see fan fiction about Wade and Kev. Oh my god, please don't. Alright, you got it. <laughs> please don't. What it'll, right, let's don't jump worry, over. it'll be PG. It'll okay, be good, PG. good, good. That's fine, that's fine. Jump on over to Tommy. Go ahead, Tommy. Hi, I'm Tommy Taco. This is going to be the first time I've ever played Dungeons & Dragons. I've got some tabletop experience. Uh, I do not have a favorite color. Uh, I like most vibrant colors, so I'm not going to choose one because it changes every day. His favorite color is yellow. Uh, no, except for that one. I'm not a fan of the color yellow for some reason. Hmm. I think it's because of an incident of something I ate <laughs> once. But, yeah. So, uh, occasionally on YouTube, occasionally on Twitch... Uh, I'm not very active on either of those platforms, so you can look me up if you want, but you probably won't see any active content for the next few weeks. Okay. And uh, make your theories in the comments below about what he ate that was yellow. Uh, jumping over to the, the man of the hour, Baka Zombie, a.k.a. Sharp Dressed Gaming. Uh, as Chris said, I usually go by Sharp, but you can find me on YouTube and Twitch at uh, Baka Zombie. But more commonly found on Twitter at Zombie Baka because somebody stole my my handle before I could get it. Um, no. I have play in a couple different D and D campaigns. Two of them are streamed on a different Twitch channel, and uh, my favorite color is blue. I suppose. I think awesome. we found the one person who has more usernames than Chris has had. <laughs> also, I have some dead channels. Go find them. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Ooh, dead channels. Okay. Are you sure this is uh, called the Lost Minds of Fandelver, or is this uh, Lost Minds of Sharp's Dead Channels? Oh, we, oh, we could no. be mining for that YouTube gold later. Who knows? Um, Open up a chest and find something precious, man. I'm gonna hold on to it forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, guys, I think it's time we jump in to tonight's game. <laughs> oh, so excited! Let me. I need audio. Here we go. Cool. It's okay. okay. We'll cut that. So, oh yes, got to mention everything here tonight is pre-recorded, um, just due to the 
we can only meet on Sundays and Amoris is on Mondays. We wanted to kind of spread out the content for you guys. So it's pre-recorded Sundays and will be uploaded or streamed Fridays on Twitch and uploaded on Saturdays to YouTube. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, Amoris just gets weird preferential treatment for some reason. I don't know why. Because it's it's the it's the homebrew, man. Anyways. It is first, that's why. So. <laughs> Where the fuck is it? <laughs> Don't worry, the kids. That'll be bleeped out. In the city of Neverwinter, or however you met him, a dwarven man named Gundren Rockseeker asked you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough and tumble settlement of Phandalin, a couple days travel southeast of the city. Gundren was clearly excited and a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, uh, just saying that he had found something big and that he'd pay you 10 gold pieces each for escorting his supplies safely to Barthen's Provisions, a trading post in Phandalin. He then set out ahead of you on horse along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, who some of you have met, uh, claiming he needed to arrive early to take care of business. If you spent the last few, you've spent the last few days on the high road south from Neverwinter, and you've just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. You've entered, uh, you've encountered no trouble so far, but this territory can be dangerous, and bandits and outlaws have been known to lurk along the trail. So, uh, the audience sees as they're coming around the corner to come onto the uh, Tribor Trail, two oxen being being uh, steered by a big woman in armor holding the reins go ahead sharp and introduce your character oh god uh, this woman is a half goliath named valiada uh she stands about seven foot two uh when not seated steering these oxen uh, she's wearing chainmail adorned with pieces of armor like on her shoulders uh, her hair is pulled back into a pony that it's brunette hair uh, and she wears a handkerchief on her head that she usually uses during her blacksmithing hey and uh, leaning against the bench that Valida Val Valida <laughs> I always struggle to say the name uh, is uh, is sitting on is a uh, dark brown haired woman who smells a little bit like fruit Go ahead, uh, Nissa, and introduce your character. My character is Jack. She's stand. She's kind of relaxed right there. She is freshly cleaned, wearing a white shirt with a little bit of leather armor across her waist. She's wearing rather tight striped pants, and uh, we're also wearing some boots, and there is a rapier at her side, as well as a couple of accessories on her belt as well. Her, yeah, she's got the dark brown hair. Her eyes are hazel, just kind of lazily watching things along the path. And she's got the tan skin that is commonly seen from sailor folk. And, uh... Behind her, just kind of flicking his uh, his flint box in the corner of the wagon. We see a little little gnome dude. Go ahead, Igua. Right. Well, uh, you see a small red-haired gnome, um, light, very light facial hair, sort of spiky orange, uh, like tips on his um. On top of his head, big bushy eyebrows, um, with sort of greenish uh, attire that sort of fades into this orangish red color, um, and he has a little red colored newt on his shoulder at the moment, just sort of sitting there. And last but not least, once again, Sharp, I'm saving you for last, or not? Sorry, Sharp's already went. I'm sorry. Uh, last but not least, a Big, rooting, hunk of man walks alongside the cart. Go ahead, Tommy. All right, so you see a gray skin half-orc. Uh, you get the feel that he's definitely a barbarian. 
Uh, I've got a red mohawk, uh, or- bright orange eyes, and you see that he's tip- he's basically only wearing a few leather straps across his chest, some makeshift le- makeshift leather boots, and a red loincloth with some leather straps hanging from it. And uh, from how I've introduced myself, I am Zorag, barbarian of the Northwest, driven out of my homeland by a dragon. And I'm just casually walking down the path, kind of ninety percent in and ten percent clothing. Yeah, you're pretty sure if like this dude sat on the cart with you, it might might drop another couple feet. <laughs> He's a very tall, tall man. Um. So you've been on the Tribor Trail for about half a day. As you come around the bend, you spot two horses sprawled out about fifty feet ahead of you, blocking the path. Each has several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. The woods press close to the trail here, and on either side is a steep embankment with dense thickets and trees. Uh, what would you like to do? Follow you to stop the right. cart. Right. So we can check these horses to see if we are aware of who they are. <clears throat> okay. You, you stop the, the oxen cart, which is easy enough for you. Um, do you try to get closer, or do you want to look from afar? Yeah, she would grab her flail that's sitting on its head next to her and get down from the cart to go check on him. Awesome. Okay. So, as you approach, is anybody joining Validia? I'm going to walk up alongside Validia and see if I can notice anything kind of past the brush there, see if I see any movement going on. Okay, roll a uh, perception check. All right. Give me a minute, because I'm Jimmy, terrible with this character sheet. in the cart here. Yeah. We're fine. Uh, Jeb's going to poke his head out the top of the cart and wonder what's going on. <laughs> yes, you see. Where do you see your... Uh, I see my passive perception. Uh, so under the skills, it should have something that says perception. Oh, there it go is. Ahead and click Sorry that. about that. No, you're fine. There a learning go. experience, like we said. First roll. Twenty-two. <gasps> Holy. Pretty good first roll. I'm not gonna lie. And that's okay. gonna be the only good roll for the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, can you... I just interrupt for a second? I'm. Go for it. I don't see anything showing up on roll twenty here. I'm still seeing the uh, intro screen, the last mine. Uh, Yo, that's front screen. That's uh, that is on purpose. Okay, just making sure. Uh, as you scan the, the tree line, Zorag, you spot a little bit of movement in the thickets. And uh, the tip of an arrow sticking through. Hmm. I'm going to turn uh, to... Oh, man, I cannot pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> well, so I'm just going to, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to, like, kind of elbow, like, this large, like, woman that is just, like... I could tell can fight and just kind of <laughs> whisper like an arrow from the bushes. I'm immediately like grabbing my axe out of my, like from behind me. Yeah. She'll, so instantly she's going to close her fist that in the shield pops out on her left arm from her gauntlet and drops the flail head. So a chain is now attached in the, the hilt and the head and say, who goes there? I do an Im- intimidation check for it to try intimidate with my size and getting ready. Sure, go for it. All right, let me actually get on the right page. <clears throat> intimidation check, twelve. Okay. Uh, and as you say this, there are, uh, goblins. Two goblins jump out of the tree line to your north, with arrows drawn. Um, as another two do the same for the south. Uh, go ahead and I believe so you guys would be moved up just a little bit since you guys were ahead of the game, but go ahead and roll initiative. So what you need to do for this is click your character token. I can add it later. Um, so let me just get the uh, thing up here. Oh, yeah, the turn order is different on... Yeah, I kind of forget how they even do it. There it is. Why does it say Sildar? That's 
There he is. All right, so over there. An 11. Oh yeah, and also read out your rolls um, just so that people are only listening and not watching. Oh, 13. I, roll I got 13. a 12. 12, 13, 11. 11. Well, I got a 19. Okay. Holy shit, oh. dude. That's one She's thing ready. I'm not sure about is how to actually add you to the turn order. I as I Plus said, one I am click on the token. Right, and then right click. I got it. Thank you. Hey, Here Sharp, just is it Valida? Valida. 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 Okay, Valida. Everyone's going to struggle with this name. <laughs> it's going to change constantly. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Prepare your nicknames, y'all. Let me go ahead. Jack's and a little slow to get off the wagon. <laughs> so, uh, since. Our friend uh, Zorak was able to see them. I'm going to go ahead and move them to the token layer so you guys can see them. Boom. Mm. I've, go I've gone ahead and marked them with different colors just so that if we have to call them out, say, like, I'm attacking the red one, etc. or whatever. Cool. All right. Everything. Now I need to roll there, Nisha. I'm sorry. I'm still learning. All good. Well, it's hard to get a hangover when you DM. Trust me, I know. Yeah, I need like a third monitor, dude. I'm telling you. Okay. I don't see a place to roll their initiative. <laughs> oh, that's right. I can do this. Hold on. Is this where Valida and Zorig would be if they were going to check the horses? Oh, they rolled a 20. Cool. Makes oh. sense. <laughs> Dude. The thing's got the drop on us. Okay, so uh, those arrows that they did have pointed at you. Uh, one, by the way, yeah, Zorag's like here and Validia's like here. <laughs> um, the arrow from the red dude over here is going to go to attack uh, Validia. Let's go ahead and see if that hits. So, okay, these goblins are fucking insane. <laughs> you, uh, I assume that beats your AC, 23? Yeah. Okay, you take four piercing damage. And the blue one, blue goblin, is going to do the same thing. An 11. That doesn't hit. So the arrow flies right past you, right past Zorag, into a tree. It goes ding, 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 you know, as it wobbles. Um, the orange dude right here is going to charge up with a uh, short hand in hand at Zorag. Oops. Go for a, or a scimitar, sorry. Does a 18 hit. Yeah, that hits. Three damage. <coughs> Oh, I was like, Argh! and uh, last but not least, green one goes. I should have like separated their turns. <laughs> green one, green one's gonna jump down from the ledge, and uh, probably takes a little bit extra movement to do that. So it can probably only get up to, like here, but he's got his scimitar in hand and he's like kind of taunting you a little bit. Uh, as he waves it around. Okay, up next we got uh, Val Valia Valida. Closer every time. Oh, Valida. Valida. Valida swung her flail at the orange goblin. Okay. Yeah, so no, eleven. 11. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, I believe that does miss. Yes, that misses. Heck. So the the goblin kind of just like jumps to the side out of the way uh, and kind of laughs at you. Alright, is that all you want to do or you got something else? Uh, I gotta check to see if I have bonus actions yet. Uh, I do not. So that's all I'm gonna do, yeah? Okay. Zorag. Okay, so <clears throat> my character just splits out this roar just, Aah! and I enter a rage. So I'm gonna go ahead and is there a way to automatically implement that into this 
Uh, rage, it yes. It just goes. There yeah. is a button. Do I just click. click this rage damage right here? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because it says modifier. I'm just going to double check your sheet. Yes, that's what you click. Okay. And I'm just going to just come straight down on this orange goblin with my axe. Go for it. So that's with Ooh. advantage. All right, now you hit the little grit axe button to uh, see the damage, because that is a hit. The grid axe? I'll just hit the damage. On the on chat. This. Is that right there? In the chat, there's the word grid axe on your roll. Oh, okay. So click the click word. That. There you go. So. All right. That's uh, seven damage. So you just watch yeah. as Zorag lifts his axe up and goes for a ginormous uh, swing and just cleaves right in to the goblin skull, crushing it, and he just falls flat dead right there and then. Well, that one will have a headache. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, I'm still unfamiliar completely with the, the rules in D&D, so I've done a bonus action, and I've made an attack. Can I still move? You can still move, yes. You have, uh, right. I believe you have 30 feet of movement? Of yes, movement? yes, yes. So I'm going to move my character here right in front of the green one. I'm just going to just charge at him just to get in this, in this path. So I'm going to move 10 feet down to here and just let out a scream, and that's going to be my turn. Okay. <clears throat> Jeb. Okay. Right. So Jeb will tell Sticky to get down and run. Nah, actually, I'll stay there, and I'll cast create bonfire beneath this one the red one so that's i don't know if you have the sheet up that is a uh, deck save from him oh yes okay um which one did you said the green one the red one the red one okay red one there Jesus. rolls a 10 so he fails so he takes 1d8 fire damage. Go ahead and roll it. Ooh, Six points damn fire dude. Fire damage. That's that's a hard hit. Uh, um But he's still yeah. up. And that's all I'll do. I'll hide beneath the card as much as I can. I'm only small. I'm a gnome. <laughs> Alright, Jack. Uh, Jack is gonna hop out of the cart, and then she is going to move to over here. Oop. Select. Move to over here, and she's gonna take out her longbow and aim for this one here. Uh, for the green one. Okay. Ten. Oh, that... Mm -hmm. Your your shot just... It flies pretty wide, actually. Uh, probably hitting the dirt embankment uh, behind it. Well, at least I missed the already dead horse. <laughs> uh, is that all for your turn? I will pull... I will put away my longbow and get my rapier for the ready. And that okay. is my turn. Fantastic. Uh, goblins are up. And they're going to repeat the process. Red is going to fire a shot. This time, looking at Jeb. Because Jeb is truly pissed off. Oh, shit. Goblin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a 22. That oh, You really pissed off that yeah. goblin. That misses. Uh... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> that would be four piercing damage as the arrow whizzes, just hits right into the, your shoulder. Oh, fuck. Sticky. If, if Sticky wasn't there, any, if Sticky was still there, Sticky would be no more. He's just like on the cart, just looking up at me. Wide eyed. There's big eyes. Yeah. Okay. Um, You're right there, mate. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm hurt. The uh, blue goblin starts yelling something in goblin to the red goblin. 
And then uh, the you see as the red goblin uh, kind of starts moving off this way a little bit. Um, and then blue goblin is going to fire an arrow at uh, Valida. Valiada. Valada. Da, 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 da. Is that the Not canonical <laughs> language of goblins is just now ar, 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 ar. So this <laughs> goblin, he he draws his arrow back and he forgets to look where he's shooting because he was still talking to the red goblin, lo like lets it loose and it just it uh it lands right at the feet of his friend down below. And he doesn't look too happy about it. <laughs> Fucking loser! That was a crit fail. Uh, Green Gabo is gonna um, piss that his friend died. Swing with everything he has at... Uh, oh no, my connection to the server's been interrupted. Anybody else get that? No. Not me. No. 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 no, now I have. What the hell? Your connection to the server has interrupted. Been... Oh, and it went away. I'm gonna refresh the page. Oh, roll 20. DM's gone. No ah! more rules. No more rules. Okay, so. The, uh... If that's the case, I'm just going to do a nice little uh, dance here on the ground and just kick this dude in the head. <laughs> the music stopped for me. Is the music still going for you guys? It's still going for okay, us. Yep. Good. Good, good, good. So green is going to... Um, Take a swing. Try and take a chunk. I do have out of resistance to uh, slashing damage. Correct. Yes. That is a nineteen to hit. He hits. So seven uh, divided by half, rounded down. So three. Yeah, three. You take three damage. <sighs> As and I'm the like sword just staring at him. Yeah, just he's he's too short to really get a good hit on you, so he just kind of sc scrapes your like leg with his with the scimitar. Uh. And uh, then he's going to um, use his bonus action to nimble escape. I believe that's something he can do. Let me just look at him really quick. I believe that allows him to run away, essentially. <laughs> but I'm just making sure. Okay, nimble escape. The goblin. Yes, so he uses his bonus action to disengage. And he's going to start running this way a little bit away from you. Um, and that's the goblin's turns. Uh, Valida will look down at the, the goblin that's just been cut down by Zorag. Uh, then look up she because she wanted to get that one, but he obviously already got it. And see the one escaping and she'll stomp after him. And swing the flail. And miss again. <laughs> oh no. It doesn't matter if I use real dice or roll 20. I'm not hitting anything. <sighs> I suppose that's my turn. Okay. Sorry, right, as I try and get the music fixed on my end, people aren't listening to nothing. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. So, uh, go ahead, Zorag, you're up. All right, I'm, I'm, he's pissed that he just, like, cut this knee that I just had stitched up, like, a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna run at this son of a bitch over here, so that's five, ten, let's move 15 feet over to here, and I'm coming down again with this, this axe while I'm just screaming. So, bam, it's gonna be a 19. <sighs> Dude, yeah, that hits. All right, let's slam this down. Slam a jam. Straight down to cross it. That's gonna be uh, it's gonna be ten. <laughs> so, you guys are just like at this thing point, probably thinking like Zorag just could do this with his eyes closed. How do you want to kill this goblin? I'm going straight down. I'm trying to like just bisect this dude from the top of the skull all the way down the midsection. So pretty much what you did the last one, only much oh, worse. Oh yeah, only, I'm going all the way down. Like I'm so pissed off. You want to follow through with your swings there? Uh. As Zorak completely <laughs> cuts this goblin in half. 
And that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be my turn there. Uh, Jeb, back to you, bud. So first of all, I should have made a concentration check when I got hit from the arrow, uh, which yes. is a constitution something or other. I forget. Remind me. Uh, so, constitution no. saving throw, I believe. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah, that's 19. Good. Okay, so the bonfire is still up over there. Oh yeah, where did you um, place that again? I should probably wherever he was, which I think was like right there or something. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. about right. So that's where the bonfire um, is. So that's how big? Wrong one. How big is it? Is it five foot? It's a five foot area, but okay. anything that is flammable is ignited oh, fuck. while over there. And I'm going to see the red guy run away, and I'm going to jump down off the cart and chase after him, and I'm going to say, Bird, motherfucker! And I'm going to cast it again on him. So he's got to make another deck save. Okay. Going to... So it'll dismiss the first one, but any damage that it's done to the forest is already done, <laughs> and it'll go straight to the next place. Uh, his, he rolls a 20 on his deck, so this time he... Is it half damage, or does he uh, jump out of the way? No damage. So no he just barely kind of jumps out of the way as this bonfire lights underneath him, and he's looking at you like you're freaking crazy. <laughs> Gorak sees this happen, and he sees the mist, but he's like, he's kind of nodding that like at the fr like the uh, drive that Jeb has of wanting to kill this son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, well I moved uh, ten feet, fifteen feet off the cart, so I'm gonna move ten feet back down here. Just because why not? Try and hide behind the ditch as best I can. And then he shook his head because he ran away. I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, is that Fair it enough. for Jeb? That's it. Alright, Jack. Alright, Jack is going to... Jack took a look and saw that uh, that unfortunate creature got bisected rather thoroughly. Uh, so she's going to turn her eyes towards the other one that is still up on the embankment, so she is going to move to 50, 20, 25, her full distance over okay. here. Uh, and I do just call wanna, out at him. Uh, interrupt you. So uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, and that's on me. This right here is difficult terrain to climb up because it is it's like a cliff face of sorts. Uh, oh, okay. So that's going to take so right here, instead of so. five. Um, feet of movement, it takes you 10. Just for that part. Okay, so double over here. So, uh, 10, Still learning. 15, 20. <laughs> and about here. Yeah. yeah it's All not right. A big and she has her rapier out at the ready, and she's going to call out at uh, the blue guy there and go, Oi, over here! Come get it! Okay. Um, is that your turn? That's my turn. Awesome. So, the blue one looks pretty pissed at you, and he's actually going to throw his bow down, charge at Jack with the scimitar, and go for a big old swing for 21 to deal three damage, slashing. Ooh. Ouch. Um, and then Red One C is like, this This is not looking good. Uh, Red One's gonna shoot one last arrow at Jeb. Fair enough. It's a 10. It does not hit. And Jeb is going to just, like... I flip in the bird. Or not Jeb. Uh, <laughs> the goblin is just gonna keep steadily moving away. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Val. 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 Valiada. 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 There you go. That was right on. Um, she will see that that one fell. It's going to come over here. That's five, ten up the slope to again try this flail. 
eight. Oh my god! <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> this is just me. This is how I roll. Dude, you, you're like me. I can, I can never get anything done ever. Apparently when I'm GM, I can hit people, but when I'm a normal character, I can't hit people, and you have the same curse as me, my friend. Yep, can't hit people, can't do deception, can't do anything. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. Oh, she's just gonna look at her flails. Dis just I must have forged the singing correctly. Disappointing. The, the balance is off. Perhaps you need a drink, friend. Let's take care of these goblins first. Alright. Okay, and with that... Uh yeah, that's Zorag. Let's, let's oh, watch yeah. as Zorag completely cuts this thing in two again. All right, so you can see my little line that I'm yeah. making, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that would actually be 25 feet, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to move up here. I'm just going to just run up this hill. Just I'm, I'm bloodthirsty. I'm want I'm wanting the the blood. Yeah, and it's not even like he's he's not even like <laughs> climbing up the dirt embankment anymore. He's just like. He's just running up it, and it's like, my god, he's got that big of legs. He's just <laughs> able to power up it. Just, just shaking the ground as I run. And as soon as I, like, I don't even really, when I get up there, I just immediately turn, and I'm just swinging wide with it, like, going straight from, like, midsection to midsection on this guy. Okay, let's, uh, drop this attack on here. Oh. That, oh, ooh, which one is it? Oh, that's a nat one. That is a nat one for a total of seven as your axe, for whatever reason, just Even swing. with advantage, though, is the nat one because with advantage on a roll again. Do you have advantage? Yeah, I have advantage on anything, any strength attacks as long as I'm not wearing heavy armor while in rage. Oh, really? Which path did you uh, go? That's you awesome. Reckless? I'm not exactly sure. That's just how I made the character. I'm not doing what I'm doing. Let me I'm just, just looking at rage. Let me just look at your the level one. You have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. When you make a melee weapon attack using strength, you gain a bonus. And let's see. You have the following benefits mm -hmm. wearing heavy armor. Hey, it says it. It says it. The damage roll increases your gain level. Oh wait, I might have been reading that wrong. That's incorrect on that. Yeah, no, you don't get advantage. Um, due okay, to, no, I was I was reading raging. something completely different earlier. You might have been reading Savage Attack. I was which reading. Has to no, do I was. Re yeah. yeah, I was reading the rule book when I was. It was completely different. Yeah, so that's a now one baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you you swing <laughs> you swing wide, almost taken off. Valia does head. Oh shit! But hey, you I'm know, just proud he's saying the name right now. Yeah, <laughs> Valia does just kind of ducks a little bit and almost takes off some hair but she comes out clean she's okay i just whiffed this attack and i'm like when i turn to volley to i just you just see this look of like holy shit <laughs> like, <laughs> this my bad look on my face Man, uh, that's gonna, that's gonna be my turn there yeah I'm, I'm too angry right now i gotta simmer down for a bit okay uh jeb I'm gonna try and do the same thing again. Deck save. Uh, okay, yeah. Deck save. Uh, a three. Fuck yeah! Okay, great. So <laughs> <laughs> he takes five points of fire damage. Okay, so. Uh, this, uh, this goblin. Uh, describe how, uh, how its flesh begins to burn. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, for the kids so, at home. Yeah. I, uh, I focus my energy and I create a small spark underneath of his feet that just climbs up his legs and melts his face all off of the flesh of his bone and it's hilarious to me! Sorry. So... As Jeb starts... Does anyone else smell pork? <laughs> no. Mm, Go pork. As uh, Jeb begins to laugh to laugh uh, to himself about his murderous, uh, fiery rage or you know destruction, whatever. Uh, Jack, you are up. What do you do? Well, I'm going to use my rapier and attack him, and since I have the dueling fighting style, uh, I think... Do I just click on dueling style, or do I just click on my rapier? 
me double check. If... No, as a fighter, your dueling style is just there. Like it's just you happens. just get a so your ah, you, yeah. Okay, you have that yeah. checked off, so that's good. What you did is fine. Okay, that check mark is actually. And there we go. Uh, Take a swing. A twelve misses, barely. You kind of uh, go to hit, and he parries it with a little bit with the sword, and your your rapier kind of digs into the ground just a little bit. Um, so yeah, you miss. So you bugger. You so, bugger. Uh, on the goblin's turn, he looks at you all panicked. Uh, with one last swing, he tries to hit Jack. And because... I have defensive duelist, so I can, uh, when wielding a finesse weapon in which you're proficient and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack. Which would be perfect. However, this goblin yeah, rolled a six. And, <laughs> oh, you that's a reaction, so you can do it on a different turn. But mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because this goblin was nowhere near you. He's just, he actually looks like he might be shaking a little bit as he uh, uses his bonus action to nimble escape and he begins to take off this way. Uh, that is the goblin's turn. Valiada. She'll say through her gritted teeth, don't let it get away. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Swing the flail. <laughs> oh, God, Come. please. There it oh. is. Oh, there, there it is. is. Yay. And uh, there are five bludgeoning. Okay. It is still There standing. you go, mate. Barely hanging on to life. I, maybe this thing is balanced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn. Zorag. All right, so I'm still getting used to the action economy here. Uh, is dropping a weapon I have in my hands like a bonus action? Similar uh, to that, you can or... drop a weapon and it, it's nothing. It's a free action. So it's a free, it's a free action, action to drop a weapon, or I think like. Uh, interact with something simple like so what I'm asking is I'm gonna drop my great axe and I'm gonna pull a javelin from my back and throw it yeah that's fine yeah you can do that okay so I just see this thing just booking it just like, get back here and I just fucking drop my great axe reach behind me and I just like I don't even like draw it and keep it in my hands I just immediately grab it from my back and huck it over my shoulder as I'm drawing it oh. Come on, baby, give me something good. Ooh, 26! Oh, that, oh. That 20. First oh my god, you don't even have to roll the damage. 20. But I, st I still want to see right it. through the back of the fucking head, dude. That's what I'm aiming for on this. Okay. Alright, let's uh, see what damage I get Let's just I see what the here. damage would have been. That's 12 god. damage plus... So that's 14 damage. That's a pretty good roll for level 1, dude. As you right watch, through the base of the head, dude. The javelin <laughs> flies through the air singing... As it it impales the back neck of this goblin and comes out his mouth as he's now hanging from a, a tree because the javelin has gone straight through and embedded itself into the tree. Goblin just dangling there. Quite the cabal we got there. And Bye. that's the uh, end of this combat. So, Yay, first combat. with the uh, corpses uh, completely split in two everywhere and uh, <laughs> impaled to a tree as Zorak is almost single-handedly <laughs> destroyed <laughs> an ambush of goblins, what would you like to do? I'm going to keep the bonfire up <laughs> just a little bit longer. And you've noticed that uh, at least the rest of you, you've noticed that the fire's actually begun to to um, spread just a just a little bit. Just a little bit, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> I'm uh, picking up my great axe that I dropped and put it on my back, and I'm walking over to this fucking goblin that's pinned to the tree. 
Well, you know, say, do you think you want to control that thing? As <laughs> she's bending down to check <clears throat> the goblin to see if there's any kind of markings to say what group it'd be from, or... Great. So, go ahead and roll me a perception... Investigation check. Investigation check. Investigation. 16. Well, all right, a 16. So, um... Is the... <laughs> so as you uh, look over this goblin, there is not much to tell you what tribe is from. It's kind of hard to know because like tribes of goblins aren't necessarily often. Um, what's the word? They're not well Explained. categorized. There's not a lot of distinguished amongst one another. Yeah. However, you do notice as you look into this goblin's mouth jagged teeth like they've been sharpened which as somebody who's probably seen a few goblins in their time uh not you might have seen it once or twice before but it's not that common mm -hmm. and if you go uh and look at some of the other corpses they all seem to have sharpened teeth uh she'll turn to zorag to say well i'm glad to know i'll be able to count on you in fighting in the future, but finding goblins is never a good sign. There's bound to be more of them. Anything for my clan. And I just put my foot up against this pin goblin and grab that javelin and just rip it out and just let the dra the goblin just drop from the tree. <clears throat> uh, then while you don't come out from the trees and address the group as... How's everybody standing? Did we get them all? Seems like we got them all, and Jack is going to move down towards the other corpses and just look around the horses, because it's unusual to see just two horses and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So as you get close to the horses, you notice that uh, these are... Um, well, one, the saddlebags have been looted uh nothing really left in the saddlebags and also these look a lot like sildar hallwinter and gundren rock seekers horses they set out uh, a night before you and these these are definitely them hmm. well you're just gonna move down there as well uh, uh, is it possible for me horses? to rip the teeth out of this goblin <laughs> me you can do that <laughs> it's trophy stuff, man. Hey, roll, roll, like my trophy. Trophy. Just goes... roll, roll me a medicine check. Alright. Watch this. <laughs> that oh 20! My... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that 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 game was... you, you stick your hand into his mouth, right? And, and you his rip whole jaw his out. whole jaw out <laughs> of his face. I'm just gonna Which... put that in my bag. <laughs> wasn't actually as hard as you it sure sounds. You sure you don't want to rinse that off first? <laughs> Which actually a little dirt never hurt. <laughs> is not as hard as it sounds because his lower jaw was already unhinged from his his upper head from the spear that went through him. So, oh yeah, it it was actually quite the simple task. Um, the fire still spreads around you, Jeb. I am going to walk up to it as close as I can. And just, you know, call Sticky over and just watch it. Watch it burn. It's beautiful. That's all. You, you hear. I'm just like looking at this little man like, what is he doing? <laughs> As you stare deeply into the flames. He likes fire. You hear. <sighs> Feed me. <sighs> I begin to smile a little bit more. Happy. Um, anyways. Did anyone else hear that? Nobody else but Jeb heard that. You're all very far okay. away as well, so that could be it, but you know. Um, yeah, so, uh, down at the, uh, the horses, what's going on? We need to find where they were taken. Indeed. I can't lose Probably. another one to these creatures. 
Yeah, but we should probably try to move these horses off the track to allow the cart through. I doubt that uh, the oxen will appreciate trampling over these uh, poor steeds. Proud of all I do, I'll attempt to move the horses. Okay. And, uh... <clears throat> Go ahead and is anybody helping uh Valida? Yeah, Jack will help. Okay, so you're gonna roll with advantage because you're getting the help action um to a uh, strength check. A strength yeah, strength check. Uh, eight. Okay. Oh dear. Three No matter what. Uh yeah. It takes you a really long time unless somebody else also comes over and helps. Can I, like, kind of walk out from these bushes and see them trying to move these bushes? Uh, anyone yes. want to give us a hand with All right, these? I'm just going to, like, uh, slide down this hill here uh, and uh, give them some, uh, render some aid to them. Okay, and with the three of you... I'm just going to grab the horse by the back of the leg and start dragging. <laughs> with, with the three of you, you are able to do this. However, I want Zorag to roll just so you can see another crit 20. <laughs> All um, right, so how how do I do that? Just straight hit strength. Hit the straight strength. Yeah. Yeah, on the far far left. Up. Okay. What is it under saving throws? You or? can sorry. You can roll an athletics. Oh, skill there if it you is. Want. Oh, I think I already. Either way, it's fine. It. So it's seventeen. Yeah, you found it. <laughs> oh, twenty-three. Yeah. Oh wait, advantage. I get advantage on oh, what? No. Uh, yeah, I get advantage on strength. strength. No, that's been longer than a minute, so I don't have Yeah, technically your rage does anymore. fade. My anyway, rage is over with. Is there any physical yeah, but we're traits also pulling. that manifest themselves when you rage? Like, do you My, just... like, just RP, or are you talking about the rule book? Oh, no, no, RP. R yeah, 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 flavor. RP, my, my, my orange eyes, they just start glowing, like, intensely. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys very easily now, with the help of Zorag, the Goblin Slayer, uh, throw these <laughs> horses off the trail. Well, you know, gently place them, respectably, if that's how you choose, <laughs> off the trail. Uh, Jeb. Uh, Bloody hell, that was heavy. <clears throat> behind, you you hear, uh, behind. As uh, oh, you start loud. to hear a rustling in the woods. Okay. I'll get, like, real low. And I'll just peer around, try and see if I can spot whatever's doing it, and I'll just say, Hello? <laughs> Are you a friend? Um. <clears throat> no response. Oh, shit. Okay. Um. I'm going to start moving around a little bit, just just slowly, like, crouch walking around in a circle. Uh, and I'll just, you know, call out to the rest of the group. I'll say, hello, you lot. Um, possible problem here now, please? Oh, uh, what's up there, mate? I, the I draw my great axe immediately when I hear there's trouble and start heading that way. I just saunter. Do we notice a fire still going from down yes. here? Yes, and spreading. I thought it's I told you to control that thing. <laughs> what? No. A fire? No, I don't care about that. Look over here! And I'll point to wherever the uh, rustling was. Uh, fire's not really friendly when it comes to wood there, mate. But what's up? Shh, shh, shh. Don't, don't judge the fire. It's beautiful. What do you see, gnome? What do I see? <clears throat> um, roll me a perception. Yes. I'm good at these. 24. You guys are rolling really well on these perception checks. Okay. No, no. See a goblin, that's, that's and he's trembling with fear. Does he appear to be like the rest of them in the same like attire? Yeah. Or in half? Yeah. Relatively. Uh, you do notice with that super high perception. Um, one odd thing. Uh, the rest of the goblins weren't wearing shoes. This one has one right shoe. Has a right shoe on. He's a house elf. Okay. 
I will... I will call out and I'll say... Oi! I see you! Come here! You just hear, like, grumblings uh, in, in a trembled voice. It's like freaked out. Um, roll me a persuasion check. Oh, that's good. That's a zero for my modifier. Nineteen. Shit. He uh, he kind of slowly shows himself um, with his hands up and uh, sword on the ground. Don't kill. Don't kill. Run, sir. I'm gonna go walk up to him and I'm gonna put my arm around the back of his shoulders and I'm going to point to the fire and I'm going to say look how beautiful it is <laughs> oh, please. No, 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 no throwing fire I could throw you in the fire anytime I wanted to this man could and I'll point over to Zorag <laughs> just for RP purposes you went behind some bushes I have no idea where you went <laughs> you guys, I'll put like, where the fuck did this guy go? You guys <laughs> watched him head over that way. He's already pointed that direction. You guys could see him. Okay. For sure. Head that way. Well, he was your friend there, mate. I'm going to start trying to. Uh, oh, I'm still around the shoulders. Just pull him out of the brush. Out into the open. Come here, you. Um, you know what? Also, ro roll me in athletics. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he's just you don't know oh. if it's from fear, but this dude is not budging. He is uh staying put. Can I like walk up towards him and pull this jaw that I just ripped out of the other guy's face and just intimidate him and just like yell at him to get out here? Yes. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna walk up here and I'm gonna like I'm gonna RP this. So I reach into my bag and I just pull this jaw out. I was like Get out here or end up like your friend. And I'm throwing it on the ground. And I'm like pointing at the ground like, come here. So let me roll he this. Starts yelling. And is that persuasion or intimidation? Definitely intimidation. That's a 19. Ah, on both. No. no <laughs> don't tell. And um, he takes a... Uh, he'll take a step out. Why can't I click on I'm him? just going to reach out and pick that jaw back up and kind of like put it back in my bag. <laughs> Souvenir. I'm gonna turn to Volley to, and Jack, and I'm just like, "Do you want to talk to this bastard?" And I'm just kind of walking off because I don't like goblins. Now, now, he could be a friend of ours, unless he doesn't comply, in which case, fire. Oh, Volley, <laughs> Did you up. see the fire spreading over there? <laughs> <laughs> is he staying in the bushes still? Uh, he, he's just come out now. I'll be right here. Where did you take him? You can smell the faint smell of um. Yeah, that's poop. Yeah, <laughs> poop, and also it's weird. It's like a familiar fruity smell. Sort of a smell that you might have smelled on Jack before. All right, I'm going to take a step away from him after smelling the poop. <laughs> Did the poop what come after I threatened him? Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah. Hang on a minute. That smell. Smelt that smell. Is that at the bar? I mean, bars don't always smell pleasant. No, 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 no. A, a, a lovely drink that was with my rum. It was delicious, I tell you. You should really try it sometime. But uh, can I try to identify that smell? Yes. Uh, roll me a... Ooh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, Identify the smell. Roll me a... Would that be inside or investigation? 
Yeah, roll me in. You can choose either insight or investigation, whichever one you're better at. That would be insight. And I'll let you choose if it's advantage or disadvantage. So, Ten. It's a familiar smell, but you just can't you can't place it for some reason. Does it? I will go up closer to him and. Uh, Oi, were you over at the tavern of Neverwinter or s oh. somewhere close or somewhere like that? Tavern? Uh, no. Mm. I'm so good. No tavern. No tavern. Right, right, right. Do you have any bottles on you then? Oh. He's, uh. Pulls off his, the little sack that was over his shoulder and he starts rummaging through it. Just throwing things. Um. It's like a. Like a rusty nail. Uh. Some leaves. <laughs> Maybe a dagger. No bottle. Hmm. Where's the other shoe? Uh, I, uh, this, uh, I lost a, a wrong time ago. So you only go around just wearing one shoe? Well, uh... Yeah. Well, why not just lose the shoe? I'd say that's gotta be bad for the feet, you know? Well, uh, if I take the uh, shoe off, I'll... Uh, I think foot uh, go bad. Well, I think we should sigh. keep him. <laughs> well, it'll sigh and step forward. Where are the riders from the horses? Uh, um, he like looks around, uh, worried again, uh, and he just kind of like you. You can tell that he's uncomfortable giving the information. Like, can I pick him up by the back of his neck? <laughs> absolutely can. I think he's light enough for you. You have a really high strength, if I recall. Does the poop yeah, fall out when it gets picked strength. up? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you she'll, lift him up easy enough. Yeah. She'll raise him up so she that he's eye level with her. The riders. Oh. Where are they? Oh, um, roll me an intimidation check. 19, or 17, sorry. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> uh, just don't, don't kill Ramsur, okay? That remains to be seen. Uh, that runs, uh, that well. And he points uh, to the northwest um, to a little couple bushes. Alive? Uh, less. She'll just drop him from, from the height she's holding him from. And walk that way. Keep hits the ground and kind of like almost falls, but catches himself. Zorag sees this and he's just nodding like with admiration that this hulking woman just just <laughs> manhandled the hell out of this goblin. <laughs> this is gonna be a <laughs> ship. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, there no kill comes a uh, Ramsur. Yes. Now that remains to be seen, mate. <laughs> Well, he's just, just walking towards the bushes he pointed at. Please don't. <laughs> I want to keep him. I think he'd make a good pet. And uh, as you reach the bushes, you kind of park them a little bit. And you, if you look, uh, you now that he's pointed it out, you can kind of see there's like a faint trail, like a game trail almost, um, beyond the bushes. Is it slowly burning down? Behind you. But this yeah, trail like, this trail is like fire. over this way. You know, it's like Okay. Good. West. She'll turn back. Does this lead back to your warren or your den? Yes. Son. Ah. Yes. I won't kill you. I can't say the same for the rest of you. I I go the right Lamont. No no. Now kill Ramsur. Yes, you, your life will be spared for now. 
He, we have to go and find them. Gives a big sigh. Okay, good luck. And he tries to run off. <laughs> <laughs> this she way. She won't stop him. Oh, yeah, if he's running the opposite way, she won't stop him. Does anybody do anything? I'm going to uh, hit him off and just stand in front of him. Uh, and just, like, push him down, Jack, like... <laughs> and then Jack goes right behind to cut off that other exit in case he doubles back. Oh, no. You better not tell anyone. And I'm just, like, pointing towards the axe that's on my back. I think you should take him seriously, mate. Uh, rum shoe, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, you might you might want to uh, make sure your tongue isn't a flap in the eye. Oh. No flap, no. I bite. Uh, <laughs> and he bites his tongue. <laughs> That's a Which good bad. Razor sharp teeth. Oh. I'm just like look at him like, oh, he's got some commitment here. <laughs> like he doesn't bite I'm it off. Gonna... He just, you know, he bites it. No, I just like still. He's <laughs> like, oh, okay. That's sharp ass teeth. He just bit down. Uh, with yeah. that, I'm just gonna kind of step off to the side and kind of motion at him, like, go. Uh, <clears throat> or, or. And he starts booging it. <laughs> Bye. Have fun. And then I'm gonna pull out my javelin. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you could, dude. You could. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking do that, man. <laughs> I'm gonna trust this one goblin. No, 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 oh, he will remember this. Well, he's gonna move back to the car to get her the rest of her, like, traveling gear. Because I assume the cart's not gonna make that trail. Oh, yeah, yeah, the cart definitely won't fit through this, uh, this area. Um, on your way back, you actually find, um, a empty leather map case. You know, one of those tubes that would you would carry your science project in, poster board. Mm, yeah, we have those um, at my job for prints. An actual map for sailing. Yeah, there's nothing in it, just a leather a case. Chance. Toss it into the cart, I guess. All right, How and much uh, do, good it'll do us without a map. Well, we can't very well leave this cart full of supplies here by itself. You want to just, like, run it off the road a little bit? Park it? Yes, and, uh, the fire. And we stop it so it doesn't burn the cart. No! No, that's, that's, that's out of my control at the moment, I'm afraid. Yeah, so... Nope. And I'm gonna just hop on the on the seat of the cart and start steering the ox off. No the side in a little bit. fire. <sighs> I'm not even like I'm not sitting in this cart, I'm like up Jack will sit it. in the cart. <laughs> I'm gonna park it right like down here somewhere, down at the bottom. Or up here. This is up higher. Well, I'm following that game. Go ahead, that game trail. Point it for me uh, one more time. Sorry, for interrupting. Right down here, right there, at the bottom, very bottom of the map. Well, okay. that goes up a slope. Try to keep that buffer Oops. with the dirt path. Everything just shit for you guys. Yep. Whoa. <clears throat> that was my bad. All right, Does so you. Does anyone else feel the ground shaking? <laughs> <laughs> You move down this way. Is, do you guys attempt to uh, hide it all? Do you tie them um, to a tree or anything so that they don't walk off? Yeah, we'll we'll tie it and put some like brush and leaves and shit over the top of the cart. Roll Feed me the ox. A um, roll me a survival check just to see how well you camouflaged it, and you can do it with advantage. Whoever's Taking the reins on camouflaging it. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. I can do it if you Go want to. It. Nah, you do it. That, oh, okay. You do it. Yeah, we got the same anyway. You got advantage this. That's your third crit tonight. <laughs> what up? <laughs> yeah, like, Jeb, you like 
go to turn around, um, and like, where the fuck did the cart go? <laughs> I'm just ripping bushes up, like not like just ripping them straight out, just throwing it on top of the cart. <laughs> Yeah. That is very impressive. I'm going to try and climb up on top of Zorag and look over him to see if I can see it from a top-down perspective. Yeah, I mean, knowing, I'll allow this. <laughs> knowing where you parked it, you can see it, but it's like, it's you're like, oh man, nobody's seeing that. That is, it is hidden. They might hear the ox, but they're not seeing the cart. Cool. All right, let's feed him and go. <laughs> and I will just I'll I'll tell the ox to be quiet even though it probably wouldn't do anything do you have like speak with animals or anything I've got speak with small beasts which he is not <laughs> okay well then so you guys are gonna go down the trail yes yeah. great I'm gonna be last on that little trail to kind of watch our flank Yes, I was Probably actually be first. I was actually just Wait, about what? to ask the marching order. Polydo will be first. Okay. I'm gonna go near the back as much as I can. So I probably. I'll like be third. right behind Valida. Back. And then, then Jeb, then Zorag. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. So. You begin your trek down this uh, kind of hard to follow goblin game trail. Um, and as you look around, you actually, uh, Jeb, you are able to make out that somebody definitely was dragged here. Because there's, or, or it could have been, it could have been a deer or something, some sort of thing that was hunted and dragged. But there was definitely a bigger uh, thing that was dragged through this area that bled, because there's little spots of blood here and there, as well as some broken twigs and things. I will point it out to the rest of the group. I'll say, oh, looky, 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 and point to it. My. Do, uh, when he points that out, I, like, kind of bend down to look at, uh, the drag marks. Do I see any inclination of, like, any type of foot mark at all? Like, maybe there's a bunch of goblin prints, something like that. Just an image to put on the screen for now. If you guys, this is sort of like what the trail kind of looks like. It's a little more Beautiful. dense than that, but you know. Uh, say again, Tommy? So, like, when he points that out, I'll, I kind of want to bend down and kind of examine these uh, scrape marks that he that he pointed out to us. I want to see if I notice anything else on this trail, like uh, footprints of any kind. Or is it just like a big scrape? Is there um, one boot and one goblin foot <laughs> trail? You know what? That is stuff like that. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Like, maybe I see goblin prints, and then I see some scrape marks or whatever. Roll me a perception. All right. That's a 14. 14. I mean, you see uh, small footprints. Um, you know, you do actually see, like, one shoe. Here and there, a little oh, weird, okay. but you know. Um, and uh, more, more blood. You'd say that there's probably two things dragged through here. Something that you would be able to make out. All right. I like nod to Jeb. We're on the right trail. I knew it. I am excellent at seeing things. Onwards. So, you guys continue the walk down the trail unless somebody decides I want to do something else. Um, about ten minutes in... Uh, see, hold on. About ten minutes walking down the trail, and... Uh, uh, Jack, you're looking down at the ground when all of a sudden you hear a snap and whoosh sound uh, as... Validia, or Valia da, there you go. your um, your foot steps into a snare trap. Go ahead and roll me a dexterity saving throw. 
me? 19. No. V uh, Valadia. Ah. Val Val I was doing so good. Um, you had it. Valiada. Valiada. And uh, just in time, as the rope begins to tighten itself, you just snag your foot out of it as the rope shoots up into the tree and then thumps down the other side because nobody's counterweighting it. Um, trail seems to be trapped. That's interesting. We best keep an eye out while continuing on. These goblins are nasty. And hey, she'll continue on while trying to pay attention for more traps. Okay, so now you're actively trying to look for traps? Yes. Roll me yes. a perception check uh, with Jack's help. So just uh, Valiada, roll one with advantage. And uh, 19, that's solid. So that'll just count for the rest of the trail. So about another 10 minutes in, uh, you're kind of looking for traps, and you get to a point where for some reason, the footprints kind of veer at one point, different directions, and then come back together uh, another like 10 feet away. That's very interesting. What do you think causes the well, differences in these paths? I think that they purposely didn't want to step there. Can you, we see any Dis distinct differences that would cause them to start using a different path, or is one more worn than the other? Um, the the middle trail is the most worn. Two side trails look fresh; they're not like super worn down, uh, as if they just started doing this somewhat recently. Should take a side trail. I think something's changed with the middle one. She'll take egg to uh, the left trail. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jack will take out her longbow and tentatively poke at the ground down the middle trails to see if there even is something there. Uh, how far along do you walk down uh, while poking an arrow? Or is it just up to the edge of where the footprints are? Stop. Just up to the edge. Uh, no, not you don't really notice anything. About, like, anything weird. You press the arrow into the ground, and it feels like ground, you know? Can I throw my longbow <laughs> just onto the path ahead of, like, a few feet? Sure, yeah. Um, you Toss. throw your longbow, go ahead, and, no, you don't need to check for that. Uh, you throw your longbow and uh, lands right in the middle of the trail where you wanted to throw it. And does anything shift around it from uh, where it lands? A few leaves blow away from the wind of it. Folly, I will look at the bones. Hey, are you going to go get that now? I'm still thinking about it. Well, if you're willing to part with your bow, and <laughs> she'll still be going down the left trail. It's not even mine. I'm gonna follow the leader, and I'm gonna pet my newt and say, be careful, Sticky. <laughs> well, if you're going down that way, I'm gonna go down the other way. How about you, big man? As I look up over at Zorag. So if I'll we're double going back. to split up, I'll go with you. But it's not probably the wisest decision. Right then. I go down the right. Why don't you just, like, carry us all, and then only one of us has to go down one path? I'm gonna pick Think Jeb up it. and just put him on my shoulder. <laughs> I think Whee! I'm gonna throw him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna, no, no, I'm just gonna put him on my shoulder. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna turn to Sticky and say, "No hands!" and throw my hands up in the air. Sticky, uh, so we all going down the right then. Licks your yep. neck. Just saunter down to the towards the right, kind of following the footprints. Of but as I do that, I'm also looking at Valida, and I'm like, "The choice is yours." I'll follow you. 
Because I'm still hanging in the back. I'm I'm not gonna like take lead. Yeah, she'll follow. Well, it's clear that the, the the two paths converge. So once we get back onto the other side, I'll just double back and grab my bow from there. I'll follow Jacques down the third, the right. All right, I guess we're all going to the right. Suit yourself. Cool. Okay, are you guys walking carefully? Are you stealthing? Yeah. What are you trying to do here? I think we'd be on a high alert just because it's already been trapped and we aren't sure on our path as it is, so. Stepping lightly. Uh, you very carefully, step after step, step, crunching on leaves. Make your way around with no trouble. I'm still However, gonna stay where I am on his shoulders. I think it's quite a nice view. Jack, you look back, and your bow is sitting there in the middle trail. Hmm. Can I see if there's anything different from the vantage of the trees on this side, or from the path on the other side? Uh, you're asking if there's a difference between the right trail and the left trail? Uh, no, just going, looking down the center path, if there's a difference of uh, looking down it from the one end from the other end. Oh, okay, yeah. Roll a perception check. Yeah. There's perception. Oof. Uh, no, you can't really notice much of a difference. That was a five. I'm gonna go way, pick up listeners. my bow. Yes. I am going to step lightly and go pick up the bow. As you go to retrieve your bow, you step Love into the, the said, okay. <laughs> you step into the middle trail, and as you get about five feet from your bow, you hear a snapping sound as you begin to fall into a hole. Go ahead and make a dexterity check. Saving throw, sorry. Dexterity saving throw. Well, um... Can I you, flail to try to grab a hold of the edge? You do. Uh, as you uh, flail and grab uh -oh. the edge, you actually kind of are able to just quickly pull yourself out without even falling into the hole. However, your bow, your bow has is now staying at the bottom of about a ten foot deep hole. Just a hole. There's no spikes at the bottom or anything. There is no spikes at the bottom. Well, that's not bad. Just go get it. Mm. Yeah, well, is she still in the hole, or did she clamber? No, I'm. I climbed out. Climbed am out. I on which side of the hole am I? Am I on the group side or the uh, middle the of the side. path? Okay. Well, don't like... walk up behind her and. That's why you well, take better care of your weapons. Eh. Wasn't really mine anyway. I was just borrowing it indefinitely. I'm laughing at it. <laughs> She's a thief. <laughs> that's that's pirate, technically. Well, I'll just roll her eyes. A thief and an arsonist. What kind of group has he gathered? A no, fun what are you one. then, dear? <laughs> What'd you say? Sorry, I didn't hear so. well, What are you then, dear? Well... Someone with I a heart of gold. I wouldn't quite say that, but... Not a thief. To each them out? To each them out? Are you rolling now? Is that me? Oh, whoops. Oh, okay. I was just trying to figure out how to delete the longbow from my inventory. That would have been a good roll. <laughs> but you're not going to pick it up? Uh, the hole's kind of deep, and I don't see a way to get back up. Is there a so, possibility that I can you hang load, from the edge wanna, of the hole while she goes down there to get it, and I'd lift her back up out of the hole? 
Yeah, you your height, shot. nearly its whole height. The whole, the whole, your height is nearly the depth of the entire hole. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we got Validia also, like that can hold on to me and dangle your, my legs. You're very sure. A lot of people have a rope as well. You could probably <laughs> climb out of this hole. It's only yeah. ten feet deep. That's true. And it's not like all right, all right. a straight shot. I'll go it's get it. A little bit of an incline. I'll go get it. I sit down on the edge of the hole and just kind of jump in. Okay. And you die. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, easy enough to do. You, you, you grab your. All right. <laughs> you grab your bow. Reequip the longbow. Ah, this thing's gonna be trouble. I wish all my pistols. If you're all right, take like, someone give me an them. arm and help me up, please. If you're gonna take somebody's weapon from them, you can at least treat it with respect. And she'll put her hand down to pull her up. Grab her hand as I let her just pull me up. It's like. To be fair, I did buy them several drinks. Several. Let's just shake her head. <laughs> they had a good time. I dealt they're even conscious yet. And then she'll turn to continue on. Okay. With Jeb on my shoulder, I see like this little, what is that, a red gecko that's on your shoulder? Uh, he's a fire newt. Actually, oh, newt. that's it. Okay. Thank you. Look, oh, I'm like looking at him. I'm like, who's your friend? And I like point at the little guy on his shoulder. That's my friend, Sticky. My finger gets really close to his face, too. <laughs> at like uncomfortably close to the newt's face. He's Sticky. He's my friend. He just makes derpy faces and sticks his tongue out a lot. <laughs> and I just pick up Jeb and set him back down on the ground. Oh. Okay. I'll keep walking. Okay. Well, another ten minutes go by as you're walking down this trail in until eventually the trees break a bit and you find yourselves in a kind of open area, break from the trees. Um, still some brush and stuff here and there. And another thing you notice is it's like babbling of running water um a babbling brook yes babbling brook so uh and off in the distance you see a large cave uh in a hillside uh shallow the shallow stream that you heard running is flowing out of the cave mouth uh which is screened by a dense briar of thick or briar thickets and a narrow dry path leads into the cave on the right hand side of the stream so I think big open fairly biggish open area you see a cave mouth with a river coming out of it and the only dry land is on the opposite side of the river of the entrance how wide is this little river? Probably... Probably not super wide. It's probably like five feet wide, six feet wide. Okay. Um, off to your right, there's... Uh, between you and the river at the moment, there's a little bit of woods and some more of those briar thickets. Uh, and you're just kind of... Besides the hill in front of you with the cave, the, the woods is just kind of circled around. Yeah. Yeah, so what would you guys like to do? Do the tracks lead up to the river side? Um right about here, it's there's almost the tracks seem to kind of like fade off. Seems like maybe at this point they kind of, you know, don't have a set path that they follow necessarily. Um but there's you probably see that uh, they all eventually probably go into the cave. Can oh, I well, the track of blood or might be hear movement cave. in the cave mouth? Um, roll me a perception check. I can do that. 22. 22. Yeah, you guys are really on target with these perception checks. No, you don't hear anything coming out of the cave mouth besides a lot of rumbling from the river. Um... However, do you hear, like, 
to your right in that that thicket between you and the river. This um. Oh shit! Uh, I will very quietly whisper to the group and say, "Goblins over there!" And point. Do you know the numbers? No. Uh, do we see the drag marks from them dragging the the two people we're looking for? Um, uh, yeah, you can see some blood, and it seems like the, it's probably heading toward not the thicket, but the cave itself. The thicket's more to the right, An across the stream. Sorry, God, it was across the stream. I think we can ambush them, like call them out and the rest of us just kind of hide yeah, us inside. jump them are you all looking that direction now yeah i'm currently yeah. looking towards that so jeb points them out to you i assume right jeb yes and uh you can see that like they don't seem like they're paying that much attention they just kind of seem like they're chat in slacking off one's actually laying on his back looking at the sky is there like a uh, enough? I know there's a river in between uh, point A and point B, but is there like possibly like some brush or some yeah like some brush that kind of gets r fairly close to the river to where we kind of stealth around and quietly go across the river and kind of come around to the side of the cave opening? Like, do I see something like that? Uh, yeah. So if you look across the river. Um, kind of where they're they're hidden, there is a lot of brush there um, on the other side of the river. So you'd have to cross the river first, and then you'd be back into like. A but there's a forest. good clearing between where we're at to that brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bit okay. of clearing. Um, All right. Uh, as you get closer to the river, if you move closer to the river, you try to talk to each other. You notice that the river's pretty loud, and you kind of have to yell over it. A little bit, if you want each other to be able to hear you. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I gotta be right back real quick. Okay. Um, actually, we're gonna head for a break right now, so this works out perfectly. Um, Good. I need a new beer because <laughs> I opened up a hot one earlier, and I was like, "That's oh. not right." <laughs> like, I was like, "That's the wrong one." So yeah, we will be back in like five minutes. Go ahead, get yourselves something to drink, and uh, yeah, see you in just a little bit. Okie dokie. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swindler's Den, The Lost Minds of Fandelver. Unfortunately, after the break, uh, we ran into some audio technical issues on my end, that was my bad, where I forgot to record the player's uh, microphones. So. I'm going to be doing a quick recap of the rest of the session. Uh, however, you guys did not miss too much as we didn't play too much longer after the break anyways. Uh, besides some fun roleplay moments and that's that's on me. But I'm going to do a quick recap of what happened. So, as they finished traveling through the Goblin Trail, they came to a clearing. And at the far end, they could see a cave mouth where a babbling brook, it was quite loud, was running through the cave entrance and as they approached the cave they noticed out of the corner of their eyes two goblins hiding in the brush across the river the party took it upon themselves to quickly slay these goblins before they could alert anybody with valiada throwing her hammer and it hitting one of the goblins square in the head killing it instantly the hammer bouncing off and hitting the other goblin, dealing a massive four damage, but not taking it out entirely. Uh, due to a double crit 20, which is not actually a thing in D&D, however, I have them roll both. Uh, I have them roll two rolls on roll 20, as you see. And if they ever get a double 20 or a double one, really good things happen or really bad things happen. It's just kind of a fun extra thing, house rule. Anyway, so that was the cool thing that happened from rolling the double 20s for Validia. With those goblins out of the way, the party moved across the river and into the cave mouth where they heard snarling and growls from the entrance to the right. Uh, veering into the room, they were greeted by three wolves 
on iron chains. Zorag quickly tried to calm these wolves by throwing some rations, which seemed to do the trick. Unfortunately, Zorag himself then tried intimidating the wolves, which they did not respond very well to. Kind of offset the, uh, the feeding them thing. When one of the wolves lashed out at Zorag, he quickly responded with a blow to its head, immediately slaying the beast. The other two wolves, not looking too happy that one of its kind was just slaughtered in front of them, begin to lash out when quickly Jack thinks on her feet, pulling out her whip and cracking it to try to hold them back or tame them in some fashion. One of the wolves responded in cowardice and hid in the corner while the other got, began to become more agitated at the whip. As you could tell, these wolves had been beaten before. The wolf pulls and pulls at its chains until eventually it breaks and Valiada springs into action, grabs the wolf, and Zorag quickly knocks it out with the rear end of his axe, putting an end to the wolf encounter. That is where we ended the session. Thank you guys so much for watching episode one of Swindler's Den. I am so sorry for the final 30 or so minutes being cut from the broadcast. We appreciate your patience. Next week, that will never happen again so thank you so much for watching please leave a like if you're watching this on youtube later and let us know how we did how i did as a first time dm and we really hope to see you next friday on twitch and saturday on youtube as well as monday for our morris homebrew campaign thanks so much for watching this one another's den till next time peace